Do you ever feel like everyone else has it all figured out, but not you? You weren't given the instructions. Yeah, me too. If you have a big dream in you, maybe you're right on time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the This Is Called Healing podcast, where we talk all things spirituality, healing, self-development, and growth, and self-love. And it's where I can go more in-depth and just sit and talk to you guys instead of it being a short video where it just needs to be a lot of editing and a lot of points. Because for me, what I actually love to consume is the people who are very genuine, and I love when they go into depth with explaining things. So welcome to the club of not having figured your shit out, but really trying, I guess. Today, we're gonna talk about something that it seems that a lot of people struggle with and that I know I've personally felt a lot during my life. So I changed the scenery a little bit today because I just felt like I needed to sit down on a pillow and just feel like we're having a very intimate one-to-one -one right now because it is such a vulnerable and real subject. So I also made sure that I have some vitamin and lemon water. I have a decaf coffee, Nespresso coffee. I also needed some of these because I might feel peckish. These little gluten-free, I know boring, gluten-free corn chips and they're like, and they're like a purple bluish color. And I tried them yesterday because I'm on my 75 hard journey, so. And I tried them yesterday and they're really good. I hope that you're comfortable and that you have a snack and or a drink right now because I want to talk about you and I want to talk about me and how I even came to want to do this podcast. If you clicked on this video, you've probably felt for quite a while like I have and that I still do to a certain extent. I don't think it's something that you just grow out of. I called my podcast, this is called Healing for a Reason. And because I'm someone who has been trying for so long to figure things out and to overcome certain traumas and certain patterns and to use certain tools and see my life progress. But I think when you're on this journey, you realize that it's actually a lot harder than you think, but it's also so much more rewarding because when you do hard things, you get bigger rewards, right? So I feel like this is such a deep subject because there's so much to cover and it's so, it's such a universal thing, but it's also so individual how we approach it and how we feel about it and how it plays out in our own lives. But isn't it funny that this subject is something that so many people can relate to in their own way, yet when we're dealing with it in our own lives and we look around us, it almost feels as if we're the only one dealing with it. Because the truth is, I think it was Jim Carrey who said that we're so used to wearing masks and I can't remember the exact quote, so I'll, I'll put it in. And depression is your body saying, f*** you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this, this avatar that you've created in the world, it's too much for me. You can just feel like you look around you and everybody is following a freaking plan. Everybody is graduated by 24 or they started their own company and they're millionaires and they're in some kind of Forbes, you know, under, you know, billionaire under 30 or whatever the hell it is. Like everyone seems to have gotten a plan that I didn't and that you didn't. And we're like, where can I sign up to get the instructions and where can I just feel good about following them so that I feel like I'm finally actually living the life I'm supposed to? When will this feeling of when does my life start go away, right? Problem is that so many people, and I'm not saying everyone, I do think that a lot of people find their own magic in their own lives. And a lot of people do love more simplicity and love family and those amazing normal values. But I think for a lot of us, we're always searching for more. But the problem is if we start at point A, and we know that we wanna to go to point B, but point B is, is the unknown. And as we're living, it just starts to get more and more murky because we don't know how to get there because what we're searching for is a feeling and it's something that we haven't found yet. 
It's not necessarily, I just want to write books all the time, or I just want to be a best-selling author, because at the same time, it might not give you exactly the reward and the and the consistent feeling that you're looking for. And that's why we see so many people who find a lot of ego-driven success, but they're not happy. And then you can see someone who, ha who lives the most simple life, and they just radiate warmth, love, and most importantly, self-love. But this is not actually me wanting to talk about needing to, to live the simple life and just settle down with a family because that's, for me, never been my purpose, I believe, or it's never been my desire. Don't get me wrong. I would love to find the man that I'm supposed to be with. I hope I do, but I'm definitely at the point where I feel like I have a certain life I'm supposed to lead. And if I can't find someone who compliments that, I'd rather be on the path of my purpose and I'd rather find my people instead of my person. Getting back to the point I was saying before, we see so many people who seem to have it figured out. Yet we also know, like when I tell you right now that so many of us feel the same way, I'm sure you believe me because you can go online and see it. You can go to Reddit, you can go to all these threads. And if you really dig into your friends' lives, your family's lives, I'm sure that they will tell you that they have aspects of their lives that they regret, especially when you ask older people. We have been so conditioned to living a certain way that looks a certain way to the outside world. So of course, if you want something different, if you want something more, but society tells you that you need to have certain things figured out by a certain time, you're not gonna feel comfortable in exploring that unknown because you're always gonna have this voice in the back of your head, whether it's just your own negative voice or it's your mother or it's your teachers or whatever it is that's gonna tell you that you need to get to a certain point and you better make it fast. And specifically for us women, I, I personally turned 29 in March. And like I said, I've never wanted kids. I'm very nurturing. And the funny thing is, I'm sure I would be an amazing mother, but I just don't have that desire. I want to give of my nurturing energy and I want to give to the world. I don't necessarily want to have my own little family though. But the amount of specifically, unfortunately, men that just love to perpetuate this idea onto you that you never asked for and you never asked to deal with these men, they love to cast their own shadow and insecurities onto you and be like, you need to settle down soon and figure it all out and you just need to find someone. And it's like, excuse me, since when did I decide that my life needs to be about a freaking man or it needs to be about children or a family because the truth is so many women now are the ones choosing to be single and men just can't handle it because women are figuring out they have just as much power and agency and unfortunately that means that they can also create the life that they want and take back those decisions and that power that they hold and a lot of them just realize and I said unfortunately because I mean unfortunately for those men who are little babies and are still looking for their mother, they can't handle that we're saying, if I can't find someone that's worthy of me, I'm actually thriving on my own. But that's not what this episode is actually about. I actually watched, I just thought of the episode that I watched yesterday with, I think her name is Tabitha Brown on the Lewis House podcast. And she was talking about making it later in life. She talked about clearly God had a different plan for her. Personally, I'm not religious, but I'm very spiritual. I definitely don't mind when people use like God because I just, for me, I just replace it with spirit or the universe. And so she was talking about how God had a different plan for her. He had a plan for her to live more life before her dream could come in. And so she was in her late 30s, early 40s before things really happened for her. And when she looks back on her 20s, she's like, I could have never imagined success back then because I wasn't ready. I hadn't lived enough life. I hadn't gotten to the point where I had enough to share. I, I didn't have enough experience to achieve my dreams, to get what was supposed to come for me because I wasn't aligned with the dream. When we talk about wearing these masks in society and playing these roles, it made so much sense to me when she talked about that how can you be given your dream if you're not actually being you? And I was just like, Phew. 
Because how true is that? How many of us to a certain extent actually are ego driven? I have several goals, but I'm not sure that they're all truly authentic to me. I, I'm not at the point where I've fully deciphered how much I want from ego and how much I want from soul. But there's not a single doubt in my mind that when we act from an aligned soul space, that things can align with us and who we really are and come into our lives. When we surrender and allow that to happen, magic can finally start happening. There has not been one big change I have ever made in my life that didn't feel uncomfortable and scary, but where I also didn't need to fully surrender control of the how and needing to know exactly what's going to come in for me. And it's so funny because I'm sure that a lot of us, depending on how old you are, but a lot of us probably have attained a certain level of wisdom from our own experiences, but then but then we settle into the new space and then we reach a new like we reached a new level or we started over somewhere else and then we start to settle into that and then things start to feel scary again if we try to change but we've also outgrown where we are so even though we've grown we get to a place in our heads where we tell ourselves that we can't move on from this space because that feels too scary. Even though we've done it before, it's hard to apply the wisdom that we've learned in our lives because even though we made it from here to here, or even if it's from here to here, here is going to feel really scary. And now we're maybe still thinking in, in the old ways of how can I possibly do that? How can I possibly get out of my current comfort zone? I know I've done it before, But how am I going to do it this time? And that's why I think journaling can be such an important part of your routine and your life. Because when you really start to notice the things you've done in your life, the things you've achieved, the things you've overcome, the things you really want, then you can kind of start to connect the dots and you can even show yourself just how amazingly resilient you are and how capable you are. Which brings me to me being 29 this year and and you know they say that it's the the years where you're supposed to feel lost. Your 20s are supposed to be a shit show, but then you're also told that it's the most defining decade. If all we've done so far in this decade is feel really lost, then how does that define us moving forward? Being even more lost? How have we defined ourselves? So the thing I need you to hear me out on is It's so dangerous for you to look around at what everyone else is saying and doing because you're connecting to a fearful space in you that you've probably been conditioned into believing. And then you're blocking off your intuition. You're blocking off your connection to to whatever you believe in and you're, you're not connected to what you're supposed to do and what's supposed to align with you. You are, you're feeding this false narrative of time of when you're supposed to do certain things when no one that has been truly successful ever says oh this was the easiest journey that's why we always root for the underdog correct we want to watch a movie like rocky we don't want to watch a movie where it's this boy who was born into a rich family everything went as it was supposed to and there were no ups and downs and he found the girl of his dreams they got married they had children That's it. Why would we want to watch that movie? It gives us nothing. There's no motivation. There's no inspiration. We're not rooting for anyone because there's nothing exciting happening. There's no growth, right? And it's so funny that we, a lot of us want growth in life, probably, I'm hoping, but we're not willing to give ourselves the grace to get there. And do you hear me when I say that? Why can you not allow yourself to be honest enough with yourself and say, I haven't been disciplined enough. I haven't been working hard enough. I haven't had enough self-love because if I did, I would allow myself to really, really live an authentic life. And I truly believe that a lot of us do believe what we want deep down. I just think that we're unfortunately trying to make it fit into one specific job we can do or that it needs to be this one controlled thing that can never be changed. When really we should be thinking of it as, how can I become my best self? How can I just make a decision to do something that feels right? If I want 20 different things, why can't I choose to say, I'm, I'm going to become my best self. I'm gonna be all in on creating this thing. 
And if I'm taking care of myself and if, and if I'm doing it, then I can be open to however, which way that road is supposed to go. Because there's no way that if I'm doing this and I'm on this path and if I keep staying on it, that the right things aren't going to align into my life. But unfortunately, so many of us don't wanna do the work. We don't want to do the inner work. We don't wanna do the outer work. We don't wanna do hard work. We don't want to face the fact that we're living out of a past story. We're living out of old habits. And when we look at so many old people and their regrets, when we look at people where we can just tell this person is negative, they're bitter, they're not, and it's, and they're projecting because they're not happy. And we see so many of these people, they simply just follow the life that they were supposed to lead, but they probably never fully committed to themselves and their true authentic self. I don't know if you've ever read the book, the books by David Goggins. If by chance you haven't, please do, and please look him up because he's essentially known as the world's hardest man. And I don't mean that in any kind of sexual way. I mean it as in a mental discipline kind of a, a way. But when you freaking see and hear his story and how much he has overcome, you cannot possibly imagine what he's been through and the life that he's been through, how he used to be as a child, that he had a stutter, that he was terrified all the time, and that he grew up and he was spraying for cockroaches, he was overweight, he was essentially not even settling, he was like just living the bare minimum for himself. Essentially, he was doing what a lot of men do for women, the bare minimum. And long story short, the man that people look up to today that inspires so many people to get out and go after it is a person who used to be so lost, overweight, broken, fearful, stuttered, stuttered and now speaks on stage. If that isn't an inspirational story of someone who took pain and made it into purpose, I don't know what is. It would have been so easy for him to just stay on the lost path and just be like, well, I feel something calling to me, but I'm just not gonna go for anything. And again, it's not like he had this one major purpose that he was not doing. He just knew that he used to be what he classified as the weakest man. And so he turned himself into the strongest man. And again, we're not necessarily talking physically, even though he probably might be. He made himself into the toughest man alive, right? No one could come into his life and make him do that because the amount of discipline and growth and self-talk and action that that takes on a freaking daily basis is absolutely insane. So clearly, I'm not saying that that's what we all need to do. But it's time to realize that the people that you look up to and that you see where they are now, most of them did not have a straight and narrow life. They didn't have this life planned out for them and it was oh so easy. They had something that was broken in their past. They felt broken. They felt like they were not living up to their potential, didn't necessarily know what they wanted to do, but they took that pain and they turned it into something bigger. I don't know about you, but all my life I've always felt different. Even when I was a little girl in school and I actually did very well in school and I, I liked being there, but it was because I always had this belief in myself that I was different and that I was original and that I was smart. And so I applied myself in those ways. And guess what? I, In my younger years, I would always do well because I believed that. But I remember every single time in school we had to have these talks on what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? And I would always kind of just make up a story even when I was little because I always knew. I knew from a very young age, I'm just different. I want something different. For me back then, what I leaned into mostly was singing and music because that was my biggest passion and it's still something I love to do so much. I just don't necessarily think that it's my main purpose to do in life. And so I would sit on the bus and just be in my own little world and have this, just this gut feeling that there's just something else for me. It's almost like I knew that there was this line drawn between my world and the real world. And of course, that can also be dangerous because that can turn into isolation, into escapism and limerence. And I think that I, I've definitely had traits of that when I was younger. And that can also be a trauma response where I definitely had a lot of 
problems that happened. I definitely had a lot of things that happened in my childhood where that I think I learned early on that I need I need somewhere to go for myself to cope and to kind of escape to. And you don't necessarily know better as a child. And I actually think that was a pretty healthy thing of me to do because you could also just have gone down a completely different route. But isn't it funny that I just remember constantly telling myself, no, you're made for something different. You're, you're, you're here for something else. But don't talk about it to them because they'll ruin it. <laughs> And the problem is that when we grow up and when we become more conditioned and socialized, so to speak, we start to lose that sense of wonder and that inner child. We have to start becoming adults. So we have to start making these decisions. And it's just kind of like, when will I have time to find myself? Haven't you ever just felt like you want the world to pause for a year and you don't get older? You can just figure things out. But the problem is, I have personally taken a lot of time for myself But all that mostly turns into is procrastination. It's waiting. It's waiting for a life to start. But you have to get to a certain point where you're like, yeah, I might feel lost. And settling is clearly not something that I can do because I'll ruin it. I will sabotage it because I know my soul wants something else. It wants something that it's aligned with, but I'm also terrified to go for it. And now all of a sudden, I am just feeling... Like I'm not enough, I'm not good enough and I don't have enough to speak for the person I want to be. And if I can't find that, then I'm just going to be seen as a loser or as someone who is pitied or or like a victim almost. And those are the last things I want to be seen as in my life. But unfortunately, you just can't control the way that others treat you or the way that others see you. And I think that a lot of us are so afraid to start something new because we don't want to be seen as inexperienced or, or you know, even if it's something as simple as, sometimes I see, and I love this, when I see, let's say, 40-year-old women on TikTok doing their thing, like with their businesses or even if it's just vlogging, I want to hear from women who are older than me. I don't want to go on TikTok and only see women who are 16 to 18. Like there are a lot of wise younger people. We need to get rid of this narrative that you can't be on TikTok if you're over a certain age or or I can't start a YouTube if I'm not a teenager or I can't I can't study something else or I can't I can't have a child when I'm 35. Says who? Because if people have done it then maybe you can do it. And if it doesn't happen for you, it's probably not meant to. But what is meant for you, if you fully decide to become your best self, there's no way that it's not going to come to you. But you you will never know if you don't try. And that leads me to that question of, did I miss out? Because the problem also is we keep teeter-tottering between things because we think, if I do this, I'll miss out on this. Or did I miss out on this in the past? And there will, of course, there will be things that you missed out on. What you have to understand is when you choose a path, you exclude the others. But that's what life is about. It's about choices and it's about living and experiencing and it's about growth. It's healing. It's you didn't come here to just live a boring life. And if you have a certain feeling like there's more to your life, but that you're falling behind, I need you to ask yourself, what are the things that you're missing out on? Like truly, can you ever really miss out on something? Because if we believe that the things that are meant for you will come to you and for you, then how can you miss out? The only way you're missing out is if you go through life never listening to that voice. And it is shocking how many people in their 20s, and I'm one of them, I know, who fall prey to the sense of, I feel behind, I should have, I should have, I should have. But when will you ever get to where you want to be? How will you ever figure it out? If you keep every year living as if I'm falling behind, I need to do more. And then you follow a path that's not yours. And then do you really think you're going to wake up one day and feel like, oh, now I'm doing it. Now I'm living. Now I'm excited because if you're never going to go through that growth journey, if you never dare to say, I don't care, I don't care where I'm at right now, that's the old me. Those are the results of what I used to do and how I used to live. But now I need to trust that I came here with a purpose and that I can absolutely find it. Even if you keep hearing, oh, I'm falling behind, I'm falling behind, then I need you 
to judge that voice, I need you to call it out and say, I'm not falling behind on anything if I follow what I want to do. Really, really ask yourself, is it just all the voices of the people I've heard and seen in my life telling me what I need to do? And is it possible that I didn't do it because something in me felt so resistant to it? And think about when we talked about people like Oprah and even Tapitha, like people who struggle and who, people who struggle but who still dare to get up. David Goggins, you need to believe in the unseen before it's seen. I don't know if that's a quote or not, (laughs) or if I just made it up, but you cannot become the person that you want to be who has this big dream that she's living or he's living if you're not going to put in the work, but you're never going to put in the work if you don't believe in the result. If you're too afraid to say, this is what I'm going to go for, this is what I'm going to do, and this is the plan, this is the strategy, and then you show up and you pivot when you need to. If you're too afraid to step into a new life, then it's never gonna happen. And then the only result that you know you will ever have is the known. It's gonna be the worst unknown ever. It's gonna be the worst life ever, probably, because you're never living authentically. And I understand, because I'm, I've gone through it for so long as well, that you get caught up in in what you need to do, to-do list, being fake busy and just doing things to do it. Or you try a new path. Like I went back to school at 25 and moved across country because I was like, I just need an education. And now I'm almost done with my master's and I'm like, I probably, I appreciate the lessons, but I probably won't be using it <laughs> because it's not the path I want to go down. Whoopsie daisy, kind of always knew it, but oh well. But what am I going to do? Am I going to just take a job in some corporate office place and live my entire life like everybody else? Find a guy now because I need to have kids within the next few years, even though I never really wanted kids, but I don't dare to question that. Should I just do what's safe from here on out because now it's too late? Too late for what though? What is it that I'm late on? My own individual life, my own journey? How can I possibly be too late for that? And that's what I need you to understand. I have had this extremely serious freaking conversation with myself a few times now. And I'm finally at the point where I just don't give a shit anymore. And it's so liberating and it's so freeing. But I had to get to the point of years and years and years of not doing the thing, of having regrets, of being bitter, of trying things and then being, but in the back of my head being like, I still feel like I'm falling behind even though I'm doing things because they're not aligned with who I am. And I'm almost yelling at you guys because I've yelled at myself so much because it's such a shame that we don't allow the life that we could have had. And I really hope that is a wake-up call for you because trust and believe, no matter how motivated you may get, that motivation will not last. And you will go out in the world and see your old life and your old triggers and your old world But that doesn't mean that it's not the right path for you to change. If anything, you need to see that old world as something that's reflecting to you what you need to change within yourself. Don't see it as, oh, I don't have someone giving my new life to me. I don't have the changes right in front of me. I have to do things. Understand that the reason why you're so resistant to it is because you don't believe in it changing. Essentially not believing in yourself And that can be a hard freaking job to accomplish, to finally believe in yourself. First, you have to say, I've had enough of myself, of the old me, but at the same time, I deserve more. I've had enough of myself because I wanna be better. Because I know deep down, there is more than this life I'm living. And I'm not behind on that in any way because I needed to go through what I needed to go through to get here. But now I'm at the spot where I freaking need to take action. Because you wouldn't be seeing this video if you weren't ready for that. And I know the different feelings that can come up because I've tried it. So A, you might be super motivated right now, depending on who you are and where you are in your journey. And I love that for you, but I'm going to need you to take action. So please show up for yourself and make sure that you do something for yourself. That you don't just let this be, I feel so motivated, let me save this for later. I can't tell you how many videos I've saved for later. How many ideas I've had that I didn't execute on. And then when you go back to them, it's like the energy has gone out of them. And you're like, oh, well, also didn't do that thing. Whoops. Or B, you may be the person who 
actually feels a lot of resistance when you hear this because you haven't actually done these things so it may trigger you because you're still in a victim space and that doesn't mean that you haven't been a victim in your life or that you don't have very real things and very very real excuses but nothing good is going to happen if you don't take responsibility for your life and for your choices and for where you are and for who you want to be and for where you want to go why would you want to live let's say you're 40 why would you want to live the next 40 or 50 years turning into a bitter old woman or man who cares if you want to go back to school now spend five years there and then start a business after who cares if you want to start something completely different at 50 i need and you need to get this narrative of we need to do the same things our entire fucking lives through your head because how many people don't you see like at my job where i work right now i'm in school and i do work but where i work in an office it's very, very normal for people to work in a place two, three, four years and then they shift to somewhere else and they have a completely different role. And it's because we're not living in the same world anymore where people just sit in the same place and they're supposed to sit in the same place. The woman is supposed to be at home and you're supposed to just go along with the same things and the same routines every day and not question it. That's not the world that we live in anymore. So why are we feeling like we're behind and as if we need to live that kind of way when that's not the way it is. That was a crazy law rant, but I hope that you resonate with it and that you understand what I mean. Because we need to question why it is that we feel this way. Because who are you trying to live for and why? If you're not happy, what's the point? Why do you need to feel behind on something? Really question that. If this is just life that we're living and there is no one code or cheat sheet to how to live it or how to be happy why do you need to be a certain way so with that said let's remember that your choices define you your choices define who you are not your past not your traumas not your experiences but your choices right now matter not who you used to be but who you choose to be can you tell that i'm kind of a songwriter with the way that i I just rhyme naturally and this really reminds me of that story and again i'll make it short i'll make it short because i feel like we've all heard this story so many times but there is that one story of a dad of two sons who have the same dad or they had the same dad who was an alcoholic and one of the sons grows up and becomes an alcoholic and when people ask why he is why he drinks and why he's an alcoholic he says it's because my dad was an alcoholic so of course naturally that's all he's seen that's all he's experienced so he needs to follow in his dad's footsteps then the other son grows up doesn't touch alcohol doesn't want to never does people ask him why don't you drink he gives the same answer because my dad was an alcoholic so do you see that one person makes something out of his life and chooses to be the antithesis of his dad because it wasn't something good he chooses to say i saw this destructive man on this destructive path so i'm not going to go down it and the other said i'm going to be a victim to this because this is all i've experienced this is my childhood it can't be good to grow up and i know this from experience because my stepdad was an alcoholic you can't see anything good come out of that in your childhood probably right but you don't have to make a decision to follow in his footsteps at some point you have to choose for yourself not only am i not who i was in my past i am not my parents i am not even who i was yesterday if i don't choose to be but maybe just maybe my story and my past give me something special that i can actually turn into something great maybe i can use this for something good in my life and I really need you to reflect on that. Maybe that I am starting later in life on something else means that it's going to be so much more amazing. For me, for example, like let's say you've never been in a committed relationship. Maybe when you find your person, and if you do, great. But maybe when you find them and let's say 33, you find the most amazing woman or man because you didn't settle and you actually get to experience so much life with that person because at 33 you haven't even lived half of your life hopefully so you get so many years with this amazing person how amazing is that because you didn't settle because you aligned with you first and then you look around and you see all your friends who were always in relationships 
getting divorced, being unhappy, all those men talking shit about their wives and how they don't want to be with them who have affairs, all the women who are choosing to get divorced because they found out they didn't want that kind of a life. But because you took your time, you settle into yourself, you committed to yourself first, you found something that really was rewarding and lasting because of it. I don't know about you, but I have for so long, even though I've changed a lot, I've somehow just always shown up with the beliefs that I am my past and that I'm my past self and that that's the story I have. I will always be somewhat lonely. I will be unlucky in love. I won't be seen, heard, and expressed. I won't ever be abundant. I, you know, I just always kind of have to be a side character in life. Why? Because that's just kind of the pattern that I developed very early on and it's hard to grow out of a pattern. And now I feel like I have two versions of me. Like I have a messy me and I have a very organized me. I have a past me and I have a future me. And I feel like the current me is kind of in between where it's like, I have a tendency to be clean but messy. Like cluttered but clean. But the dream version of me is so structured and organized and just like on point with everything. And of course you need to understand, and let's do a whole other episode on this, but one thing I've learned is perfectionism isn't real. I just realized I've been holding my crystal this entire time. I think it makes me feel safe and good. (laughs) Um, Action and intention is the one thing that I feel like I am really honing in on right now because then I trust that I'm going to set new standards for myself and that perfectionism and the perfect version of me isn't real, but neither is the past story of me. So there needs to be a sweet spot in the middle where me doing these things right now, where opportunities are actually coming in in, into my life and I feel more free than ever. That's the living that I've been waiting for. Not the perfect me, not all the results, but the process and the process where I'm actually all in. And so many people say that you have to enjoy the process, but we never fucking listen until we finally do it for ourselves. Instead of it being a dream of one day, we never learn. So the me that's looking for new apartments, the me that's learning how to invest, that's learning how to build a business, who's learning about entrepreneurship, which I'm doing a class on in school, the me who's filming right now, the me who's writing every day, who's who's setting new standards for herself, who is saying no to these low value dates, who who's saying no to things that don't align with who she wants to be. That's the it girl. That's the main character. That's the woman I want to be. Not the perfect version of me, the woman that's doing these things. So please understand that you may be really, really frustrated that if I start now, I will be at a certain age until, or will it ever even happen? But you need to understand that once you start committing to yourself, that feeling can come so much sooner than you expect. But you have to be willing to commit to yourself first. And this is me when I was younger. For my audio listeners on Spotify, I'm showing a picture of myself right now. So when people say, you couldn't pay me, to go back to the old me or to the younger me, oh boy, do I feel it. Because not only was I lost, broken, depressed, confused, and very overweight, I was still that girl with all those dreams, but I was so freaking sad all the time. But I was still showing up in my life. I was still trying, and I still had this version of me that I'm so much closer to now and that I look like now in her head. So when I tell you I used to have different habits and a different life, Trust me, I mean it. But there had to come a day where I was like, enough is enough. The version of me is only existing because of the habits that I have every day of not doing things, of not showing up for myself, of not being able to look or dress the way I want to, who's not healthy, who's eating her feelings, who is who's alone too much, essentially, because she's embarrassed. She's ashamed of herself. But that girl, finally one day, and when I say it was in one moment, and I'll explain in a whole weight loss video if you want me to, it was in one day, no, in one split second that I decided enough is enough. And I was at the mall, I ran into a friend or like someone I knew from school and her boyfriend, and I felt like, I just, I never felt comfortable in myself or my body. So afterwards, I just felt like, why do I always embarrass myself with people? And then I walked past this uh, storefront and... 
it was like almost like a mirror and I saw myself and I realized, wow, I never look at myself when I walk past these. I never love to shop. I never love to try on things because I don't like my body. I hate it. I hate myself. But when I imagine myself doing things in my head, I'm seeing a thin girl. I'm seeing a fit girl. But that's not the life I'm living. So no matter how much I feel in my head, that's never gonna that's never gonna manifest because that's not the actions that I'm taking. AKA, it's not gonna produce the results I want in my life. And even back then at 18, 19, 20, I used to feel like I was too late because I had already accumulated these habits. Now it's been at least five, six years of me being in shape, healthy, and pretty much the fittest in my family because I love this life now. I've essentially created a new freaking identity for myself when it comes to health and my body. And it's added so much to my life for my mental health and for my body. So I need you to understand that no matter how much you feel that you've done something for so long or if you're not good enough for something, all it takes is you challenging that voice and saying, I don't care. I'm not good enough yet, but I am worthy. I am not good enough yet. But one thing I am is worthy of it. So I walked into a bookstore in the mall. I got one of the only like diet books with an author that I know, which I would not recommend that one because don't go with something so freaking complicated, especially when you're that young and you're not really cooking. That was a little stupid of me, but I just decided, I just, again, it goes back to, I just made a decision. I was just like, something needs to change. Something needs to happen. Did I know? Like we say, oh, we all know how to lose weight. Sure, we all know what's healthy, pretty much. But I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know how long it was going to take. And then I bought a scale next. Because I was like, I'm going to step on a scale for the first time in years. And I was terrified. But when I tell you guys that I was actually excited when I saw the number, because I was just dreading that it was over 200 and it was under. So I was just like, thank God for that. And it was a roller coaster and it took years for me to get to the weight and the body that I wanted to get to. And, and I went through injuries. I went through a little bit of ups and downs in weight. It took trying different things. 60 pounds down later and me being where I am now and having maintained it for so long, I don't care if someone comes up to me and calls me fat. They wouldn't trigger me anymore because I'm like, I think you need to go fix yourself because... I just know that's not accurate. You know you've done a certain great level of healing when something doesn't trigger you anymore and it used to be your worst trigger ever and the thing that you were so terrified of being called out on, essentially. I feel exhausted already. But I created this podcast almost a year ago and it came about because, like I said at first, I love learning about healing, spirituality, self-development all of these tools and bettering myself but i never really knew exactly how to apply it and or how to apply myself so i felt like i was kind of navigating this maze of like i want to create i want to do something i don't think it's necessarily just music that i want to do i don't think i just want to do random tiktoks i i just didn't know exactly where to place my energy essentially i went through the worst heartbreak of my life after an awful situationship <laughs> i went through from like late 2022 throughout 2023. And I ended it about four months later, which is crazy to say now because that's nothing. But when I tell you, my heart was so broken and I felt so lost. The heaviness I felt every single day after that for a long time is real. But I did the right thing most of the time. I did the right thing and I pulled all my energy back and I went into hermit mode and I said to myself, listen, that was toxic. That was not good for you. He was not good for you. I'm, I'm so sorry and I wish you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have been in that, but you probably needed to learn your lesson. And so I went through a lot of shadow work. I went through a lot of healing. Unfortunately, I made the stupid decision of going back to him in June and then I ended it once and for all keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> I and I started it back up in June, but I ended it in like early October, I think. I just completely cut him out of my life, deleted, blocked, gone by. And 
I'm finally now, just now, getting to a point where I feel like I'm doing so much better. But the number one thing that I'm so grateful for is one day, so maybe two months after my the first time I, I went no contact, I was sitting on my bed one day in the morning and I was I had just gotten ready to go to a fitness class. I was feeling pretty good and positive and, and all of a sudden, and I love when this happens, I just felt so freaking inspired. It was like a rush of energy and suddenly I just felt like I can do this. I just have this energy of you need to write something down right now. And I love when it happens when you just feel like you're channeling straight from spirit or from the universe and you're just being guided towards something. And within probably, I don't know, half an hour, I had like four or five pages on on Word where I was, where I was just writing down topics, ideas, challenges, and it just came to me right away that I needed it to be called, this is called healing. And I just trust that so much because when something comes to me with that kind of intensity and it just, it's something that comes in so heavy and hard that I don't doubt it. I don't have the time to doubt it. I just need to get it out of me and to get it onto paper or onto my computer. And it just felt so amazing. You know, when you just feel like that is just aligned with me, simply something that just rings true. I would have never ever come up with that idea if I hadn't gone through all of those healing moments post toxic situationship. It's still something that affects me, but I just, I'm grateful. I think I'm finally at the gratitude space where I've accepted it and I've like been learning my lessons. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna see him, I don't wanna deal with him because I still think that I could get triggered. But I just, I feel grateful because I know I know what's definitely not going to happen in my life again because of the lessons that I've learned and the standards that I now have and have and and the growth that I've gone through and the person that I'm becoming because of it. And unfortunately, it has to start with a lot of heartbreak and a lot of even deceiving yourself before that can turn into something really beautiful. And I was also really mad at myself and with him because I felt like I've wasted a year and a half and now a little bit more because of this on and off situation and because of the time I need to take to myself because I let this douchebag break my heart this bad. So that is essentially why I wanted to start this podcast and I'm not thinking of dropping it anytime soon because it was it's a lot easier to just do audio. So that's what I did. I showed up every single week and I made an episode and I posted it. But of course, that's a lot easier than doing video and editing and all of that and doing what I'm doing right now because I think for a long time, I knew that I was called to do long form content and to dive deeper into things. And that's why I'm putting it all on YouTube because that just feels the most aligned with me. So obviously it's the podcast, but it's also YouTube in general that feels the best for me. So one thing I'd really like for you to think about is try to connect with your inner child. What does that inner child really want from you? Because a lot of times both our shadows, but also our inner child is what's showing up in our lives and what we want to do. So if that inner child isn't being heard or nurtured ever, it's going to rebel. You're going to try to shrink it. You're going to try to, to strangle the life out of that little child, which we obviously don't want. So think about when you were little. Who were you? What did you love to do naturally? And I think that that's something that we've heard a lot. But even the energy of what kind of person were you before you started to get too conditioned by the world? How did you love to show up in the world? Did you take way more charge? Did you love to lead? Did you, were you more introverted? Did you love to be creative? Did you love to do, to play an instrument? Were you always playing doctor? Were you always playing some kind of office role? Like we always did that as children somehow, some way. So if you don't connect to that inner child, that inner child is going to continue to take over. If I keep telling myself that this is too embarrassing, I can't show myself learning something, I can't show up doing this thing I've never done before, I can't go take dance classes again, then I'm never going to get rid of that feeling. And not only am I not going to get rid of the feeling, it's just going to become worse and worse and worse. So I'm not feeding the good stuff by me doing it and expressing myself and being creative but I'm also shrinking down the voice and that voice has to go somewhere. So it's gonna start yelling at you and it's gonna make you cope with life. It's gonna make you turn 
turn angry and to take this energy and project it onto the world. You're gonna start becoming your own toxic person if you're never in alignment with yourself. There's no way that you're gonna shrink down and strangle that voice and drown out that noise your entire life and just live a cool, calm, quiet, collected life. It's going to rebel. There's no way that it isn't. So why not just feed it now? Why not connect with yourself now where you're at, no matter your age, no matter who you are, what you want to do, where you want to go, connect with that voice. Allow it to breathe for a second and to be heard. So lastly, I want to touch upon action, homework, and accountability because that's what we do here. I personally hate when people never show how they're personally struggling or what they're going to do or if they're not giving action steps for people to do either. And you showing up here today shows me that you don't want to live the same life that you have before, that you're committing to yourself. So full transparency, I'm definitely going to finally commit to vlogging and documenting my life more and showing what I'm doing because it's something that I've said to myself so many times and then I find it horrifying to do. So that is definitely one thing that I'm committing to. And this is my way of being accountable And another thing is I have so many freaking businesses that I want to start, but I have to actually start by learning how to do something, right? So so this weekend, I am taking time to myself to do even more spring cleaning and I'm dedicating to writing down a business template of what am I choosing? Like literally, I have waited so long to just choose something to do. So I'm going to do it now. I'm finally going to take time for myself this weekend. So anything that's not the 75 hard challenge, It's just going to be committed to doing these things for myself, making decisions, getting it onto paper and freaking deciding. And then another video that I'm going to put out is a challenge that I really hope that you guys will do with me because it's going to make such a difference. I just know it. And you need to do something. Like I said, when you're motivated, you need to put it somewhere. You can't just be motivated and think that that's going to manifest something for you because it never will. It will just drop again. You're getting a hit of dopamine and then it's going to leave again and you're gonna feel depleted, and then you didn't do anything. So on Monday, we're starting a challenge where for the rest of April, which is gonna be the last two weeks, we are dedicating to doing work for our future selves. So for me, I'm gonna explain it in the video, but essentially we're gonna do waking up early, earlier. For me, it's gonna be 5 a.m. If you don't wanna do that specific part, you don't have to, but I will explain. You're going to have to clear your space. You're going to have to do certain daily actions. They're going to be smaller and bigger ones, but I'm going to need you to actually show up for yourself. So we are going to be manifesting. We're going to be putting in the work. We're going to be changing our lives. So tell me that you're in. Journal on it. Connect with yourself. And also get on my TikTok because during those weeks, I will be posting a lot more of my own stuff and what I'm doing because I can do more short form as well. And so, yes, I think I should just keep the rest on that video because I have no idea for how long I've been filming, but I have to go now because I have stuff to do. And I really hope to see you there and I hope you got something out of this video. And and just know that you're not actually ever falling behind, if especially if you make the decision today to get on track with your life. And the way that you get on track is by making a decision that you are going to love yourself enough to choose what's the best thing for you. And you're gonna stop shaming and judging your past self because it got you to where you are right now. And there's not one single person who can tell you that you still cannot have the most beautiful life that you're meant to have if you align with you. So trust and believe in yourself because that's always the most essential part at the end of the day. And I love you guys and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Okay, bye.